All right. If you don't understand this basic level, these basic three things, you're going to have a difficult time as an artist finding success today. So let's get into these three tips that David Sanya Beat says. Now, number one, he says, as an independent artist trying to establish yourself in an online landscape, there's three important things you need to understand today. Number one, Communication in order to reap the benefits of online mass communication, you need to understand the target audience you want to communicate with and how what you share adds value to them. Does the platform you're building provide entertainment, insight, awe, community, motivation, etc., through your brand and music? Knowing what you want to communicate is the foundation of building your audience. Now, let's stop right here. I think that's the end of it. Vice snippet number one. Now, Corey, are there any particular things that stand out for you in that particular piece of advice? Figuring out what value you bring to your audience. Because I, I do yes. think that's yes. that's that's such a hard thing for artists to piece together, right? Yes. Like they're typically thinking about it from, yo, what value are you bringing me? Are you running my likes up? Are you giving me comments so you get my views up? But I don't think too many stop and think like, man, what do I represent to this person that just followed me? A thousand percent. Me, right? So yeah, that was, that was the first thing I started. That, that, that one was heavy. Man, that's what I love <laughs> about that because like you said, knowing exactly the value that you are providing to your audience is a game changer for most artists. Yeah. But they don't ever think about it. So now you're just out there posting, posting, posting. How can I make sure the next post perform well if I don't even know? why the last post performed well, yeah. right? Yeah. Or how can I at least stay consistent with it? And I noticed this pre-internet, not pre-internet, but I noticed this pre-me taking internet marketing seriously and being involved in it myself just when I was in the show side of music, yeah. Yeah. right? Because there's so many artists that are always thinking, how can I get people to come to my show? How can I get people to come to my show? What are the numbers? How can I collab with this person or work this at the door? Whatever, whatever to get mm. people to come in. And they're just thinking about them getting seen. Yeah. All right. And they're happy because this amount of people saw them perform versus the people who are thinking about how can I entertain the hell out of this audience? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when they show up, what am I going to do for them? What am I going to make them feel? Because those are the people that people say, yo, this person's dope. I want to come back. Yeah. Because you just made me feel something, whether that was fun, like he listed what, inspire. Oh. Uh all community <laughs> community is a big one too because there's some Bro. artists that have dope communities that make you community is yeah. huge community yeah. is huge that was like i'll pull that back up too entertainment that was like one of the main things when we were doing the festival joint that i had to think about because i wasn't pushing the artists all everybody else in my group were an artist right oh yeah I wasn't an artist, so I only was thinking about, well, how can I entertain the hell out of everybody there, right? And how can I make everybody feel like they're meeting somebody? So that way, in the future, they want to come back to this because they remember the time they had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's not going to be a new song. It's going to be a new event, right? Yeah. So that right there, just understanding what value you can bring, because it doesn't have to be even any of these things listed, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the crazy part about it. There's so many different types of value, just like you go to this artist for your love music and then you go to this artist for your fuckboy music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and, you're, and if the fuckboy music switches up and all of a sudden talking talk love, you're like, yo, yo, what you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know not what I mean? Day, bro, not a day. You know, like the kids <laughs> know if I want to go to, um, if I want to hear a certain type of feedback, I'm going to go to my mom. If I want to hear this type of advice, I'm going to go to my dad. If yeah. I'm going to hear this, I'm going to go to my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, my sister would say the same. I was like, oh, if I want to hear some, like, quit quit your job shit, I'm going to go to you. Right? <laughs> if, if I want to go to, like, these people don't matter and how do I finesse the corporate game, she would go to my uh, my other brother or whatever. Yeah. Like, people already know. They, so, if they can't think and know what they're going to go to you for, no. you lost. Because yeah. what do you represent? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how I, said, I, I I, I try to think about like at what point an artist is able to start figuring that out because I will give some of them that benefit of the doubt. It sometimes it's not obvious, right? Like you don't know what your audience is finding valuable uh, from you. Mm. I guess until you ask. Actually, I guess that solves the question. You just ask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like just say, hey, like why do you guys like me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what what are you kind of here for? Yeah. What about these posts or these things I'm posting are attracting you? So yeah. I can at least try to stay on path, but. 
Yeah, you're right. Most people probably can figure it out pretty. If you pay enough attention to your audience, you can figure it out pretty quickly. Hell yeah, it's it's the feedback from the audience you said, but then as an artist, you hope that the artist has some level of vision. Yeah. On what they want people to feel that's and true. what they want to provide too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. You know, it's a, it's a it's a double sided thing. But don't just say, "Hey, you got to go with my vision," and I'm gonna try to push this vision, and people aren't feeling the vision either. Yeah. And then you have to get that feedback to see what it is that they actually do like about it. So there, it's a, it's a double sided thing. Now, let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Part number two, differentiation. What will be your approach to stand out in the market? Will it be unique representation of your skill set, candid honesty, and rawness? visual gimmick, etc. How are you going to get noticed within three seconds to start an introduction to your brand and build rapport? Now, when I read this, I already think about the first piece of advice, right? Yeah. What value are you bringing? It's almost another way of saying that. Of course, it's like, what value am I bringing to my audience? Plus, what different value am I bringing to my audience? Mm. So, so you can have love, right? But how do I bring a different perspective on love you know what i'm saying yeah so it's like it'd be the same thing you know what you're talking about but now I'm like what's your approach am i raw am i funny with it am i uh angry with it whatever that might look like right yeah. um visual honor the, the gimmicks now we already know the gimmicks a lot of people think that just having a gimmick is enough but they don't realize that's a way to maybe stand out and get that attention, but gimmicks are never going to be enough substance to yeah. keep the attention. Yeah, it's the door opener. It's the door opener, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's like, nothing wrong with that. A good gimmick is beautiful, bro. Like I, I love a good gimmick, bro. Like, Great. like it's because that in itself is a, a level of genius. One, the fact that you have to be willing to be that different because nobody likes a boring gimmick. So most good gimmicks really go over the top. So the fact yeah. that you're willing to stand out that much says a lot about. Yep. The links you wouldn't go to as an artist. So that that I always give kudos to, to those artists, bro. <laughs> and that right there is is everything what you just said right there. Because you can look at somebody like Lady Gaga mm -hmm. early on. She was doing the the meat costume and yeah. all these different outfits and stuff. Then you look at Lil Rod, uh, not Lil Roddy, Lil Yachty with the red hair, the baby uh, with the diaper, the baby with the diaper, and all these things take a level of courage yeah. to stand out, but. What people don't realize, if you have the perseverance to get through that moment, it almost becomes a moment in time, but it doesn't define your define your overall career. Yeah, it becomes like, like a cool story to tell. You it's know a cool saying? story to tell. Yeah. You know, yeah, the kids yeah. like, oh, grandma used to dress like this, or your hair used to be red, uh, Papa Yachty. You know, that is, is something I feel like a lot of artists get afraid of. All right, in terms of pushing their differentiation to a certain extent, because in your mind, it's so big, right? Because yeah. you're self centered. That's just natural. Like, yeah. we all are self centered to an extent. <laughs> but the world, the rest of the world is like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. It might be for a moment. People might give you that uproar, but yeah. they're going to forget about it. We're not really thinking all red hair when, whenever we see Yachty anymore. Yeah. Lady Gaga has far surpassed all them crazy outfits and things that she used to wear all the time. People might expect it of her, but you get to chill a little bit. Like, look, like uh, what's her name? Miley. When she oh, went yeah, the, far yeah. left, you yeah. know what I mean? She started. She swung all the way back. Hey, she, she, <laughs> yeah, she went out there and started playing with, with, the, with the folks down the street. <laughs> but then she came back home, right? And people aren't thinking about that era of Miley Cyrus yeah, right now. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I'm like you, like that gimmick, <laughs> that era of your career, if you do go that space, 
it takes some commitment and it's yeah. kudos because most people are not courageous enough to do it. But if you get over it, like, cause you, the whole the goal should never to be to stay in the gimmick. And if you can get over that, man, the the, the benefits can be beautiful. Yeah, I'm saying you you brought up a point I wasn't even thinking about, but <clears throat> I think it says a lot about how long you as an artist think you're going to be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like because like you said, an artist with the right amount of time, perseverance, and all right, they, they keep dropping cool music, putting stuff out. Yeah, we as an audience understand that like you change and like you know if you were. 18 doing stupid stuff like we expect now you 24 i'm not expecting the same things from or like, or we just understand that artists evolve yep anyway you no know, I, I keep going back to that we got, got this narrative of the, the stupid consumer bro or at least from artists artists thinking like oh if i do this thing they're going to see me as this way forever it's like no man like only if you continue to do that thing or if everything you do after that doesn't level up to what that thing was yep then we'll we'll stick on it as consumers but if it's at least as good, you know what I'm saying, or, or better, then yeah, bro, we'll let you get away with it. 100%. 100%. Let's get to that third piece of advice as well. Attention, the third tenet that you need to understand in this game if you want to use online marketing today. Combining the first two with a certain level of consistency is how you occupy real estate in a person's consciousness. Every interaction made is building a relationship with your audience through communicating the value in which you wish to serve them. Bet. Now, I love this. Like one of the very first YouTube videos that I did was basically talking about the importance of consistency in branding, Mm -hmm. right? Because branding is your reputation built over time. Right, mm-hmm. your reputation is what people experience with you over time. Of course, you have a first impression, and they can be powerful. But over time is where you really establish things. So let's Im- imagine this: you got a guy in a hoodie, all right? Okay. That kid, kid in the hoodie. That's my favorite example. All right. You ever okay. seen that kid in the hoodie at school? Were you the kid in the hoodie at school? Some days. All right. Were you the kid who <laughs> only wore a hoodie at school? No, nah, no. Nah. You, ever, you had one of those kids in school? Yeah. That's on you. you walk with me. I think yeah. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> what did he become? The hoodie kid. Yeah. In your mind. It's the dude that's always wearing it. Nothing special about the hoodie. We're not even talking about some kind of outlandish branding. We're just talking about, hey, this dude wear a hoodie every day, bro. That thing might be funky. Like, dog, like, what's up? You wearing that hoodie every single day. Bam, it's branded in your mind. Yeah. Consistency. It's that powerful. And you can do that with anything. But- You know who else wore a hoodie? You wore a hoodie. You know who else wore a hoodie? Probably everybody in school (laughs) at some point, but they didn't own it. Yeah, like the hoodie kid. The hoodie kid (laughs) owned it. (laughs) It's that simple. And you hear all these artists be like, oh, I did this and I did that. But you didn't get all that credit for it. Well, it's like that person owned it. That's literally the difference between, hey, this is mine and, oh, I did it too. Yeah, bro, because wearing a hoodie seven days out of the week is crazy. It's crazy. Especially in Georgia, bro. With this bro when that shit get hot, too. <laughs> and you like, yo, this dude is committed. <laughs> you like, bro, at max, at max is 72 degrees in here, bro. Like, yeah. you, you'll be all right. Take that shit off. <laughs> but, but that's a good point, too, with the, the whole, like, first thing. Because I, I do think that gets lost. Whereas, like, us as consumers, we very rarely notice who does it first. We notice who does it a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, cause it might take a, it might take me like the fourth or fifth time to even like catch on to like what somebody is doing. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. it's just like, yeah, like I, I didn't even think about that. We don't know who does it first, but we know who does it the most. Bruh, bruh, because it's like the uh, and that goes back to the whole sales aspect of things. Yeah. You notice that it yeah. takes you reaching out to people seven to eight times, yeah, just to get their attention or just to get a call or schedule a meeting. And honestly, I was. Back in 2016, when I started seeing that stat, the way things are these days, it's you're probably like, even more. You're like 15 years yeah. crazy shit, bro. Yeah, that you number's going up. <laughs> four times on Instagram, three times on TikTok, once on YouTube, maybe a little email blast. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, they're like, oh yeah, I do want to go to that show. Let me go buy that ticket. It's like, damn you. Hey, it, it, it <laughs> happened with me. It happened with me. Uh, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> so... Rate that advice, Jacory. What you? What you what we do, what, what's the scale? One to ten. What do you think about this set? I advice? give it a seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven out of ten. Yeah. Solid advice. Solid you know advice. You know All right. Get your get your cross finish line. Get you, I'll give you 
Yeah, six and a half. Yeah. Because it's 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 fundamental. Yeah. It's very important. It's not the game changing or some specific detail that you might be able to act on. But it's great. I actually like this is like six is actually a good number in here. I want to hear you guys rating of the advice. How helpful is is it for y'all? Or is there anything out of this set of advice that y'all think is dope? But shout out to David, Sonya Beats. Y'all go, you know, check buddy out. You know what I mean? And 